So your tint has to be enough different from the pure hue, okay? Adding white, okay? Um, which is actually makes it very, very easy for paint, painting because you have paint become more opaque by mix, mix with a, a white paint. So uh, tint is actually a very enjoyable experience. Um, I'm sure people will have a very good experience with a, a paint, a painting all these tint because um, it's so easy. Uh, your paint becomes so flat. Uh, flat means there's not, not that much um, brush marks or cars if you're careful. Okay. So I'm gonna move on with the tint here.
or you can add that, that color to the white. It's sometimes adding darker color and trying to add white to that. That makes it difficult. So sometimes you may have white first in, on your paintbrush and then add that color to it. Depending some lighter hues like yellow, it's okay to add white to yellow. As long as you are making the enough distinction from a pure hue, and also, so just look at the pure the relationship between pure hue and a, a tint of a pure hue. I mean, a, a pure hue and a tint. Another thing you should look at is uh, how this one, this transition, is uh, have an equal amount of a lightness. For example, here become darker and lighter again, right? Here, it's not perfect. I see that this one uh, looks a little bit too light. This one looks too dark, right? This one looks a little bit too dark. This one looks too light. So as long as it makes sense, um, as one group of 12 as tint here, and just the equal, just a good step in between tint, that's one thing you should make sure. Okay. Another way is always you can compare with this uh, color wheel of a tint of color on color wheel. You can compare with this, try to match up. Sometimes that's also difficult because this is not the acrylic paint on, on the color wheel, right? This is actually uh, printed uh, colors and may not be exactly you cannot probably make the exact same color from what you see on color wheel, but at least you can get some uh, uh, goal when you are starting. Okay, so how much uh, different between pure hue and uh, um, uh, tint of it? You can see a little, start with these differences here. Okay, and of course, each color may be different, each hue may be different. How how much um, uh, white to be added. Um, I cannot quite give you any proportion 
you know, how much percentage, um, because I, I think each, each time I, I, I don't really um, think too much about it. I, I just try to match and see the relationship uh, between those uh, painted colors. Okay, so I, I cannot give you, I don't have any formula. I don't have any like numbers. What is the name of that tint of red? There may be a name for it. Pink? Uh, so pink is basically tint of red. Adding white to red to make pink. Now I gonna I can keep going with all tint first, but then I'm gonna start to talk about shade. And uh, because shade can be tricky, and uh, um, because tiny bit of uh, black makes that color to be very dark. Okay, so adding black to red may not be that bad. Okay, so this is pure red so far, and adding tiny bit of black to it. Now, you may also have color, name of the color of shade of red. How would you call this color? Shade of red. Instead of shade of red, is a name for it? Darker red is Essentially, it's brown, right? So brown is, there are so many ways to make brown, but uh, one very easy way to make brown is adding black to red, okay? That's brown. Right now, it's very similar between these two, so I, I, I'm not happy about this one. Um, tricky thing about uh, making a shade in dark colors, for example, if I try to make a shade of Violet. Violet is the darkest hue among those 12. Adding black to violet to make a shade of violet, I want you to be very careful for the amount of black you are adding because violet is already dark enough to start with. Okay, so it's better to not to use, better not to use too much black to it, okay? So just tiny bit of black may make sense. Because I don't want you to make black. I want you to still make a shade of violet.
None of these should be looking look, look like a black. Right now, I'm just having a little bit too much water here. I guess I want to reduce the amount of water. And often shade of violet and the pure violet become too similar. Okay, so in that case, I where you compare with a, a violet on color wheel, you can see that it's not as dark as the one I just painted as the pure violet. So. Some of those pure hues of, uh, of the very dark hues, you may get tiny bit of uh, white to a pure hue to make that pure hue to be a little bit more visible. For example, violet by itself if you keep adding violet by by itself, may end up to be almost black. Okay, so adding tiny bit of white to that makes that violet to be a little bit more. flat and opaque, or should I have a streak of white? Yeah, shoot. I often find necessity of adding white to some of those dark hues. Okay, you don't need that on those very light hues. Okay, so this is what you are supposed to be doing now. Okay, I'm not going to be uh, requiring to finish all of these, but I, I feel like you should do at least pure hue to be finished and uh, uh, tint to be finished before Monday class, okay? And sometimes that makes sense to work uh, three of the same hue together. So uh, if you find it easy, say if you made very nice um, uh, blue green here and you don't wanna mix again, you rather just make, use the same mixture for the shade of blue green and the tint of uh, blue green. Probably that's also efficient way of working. Some people prefer um, working in the same role together rather than keep working in the same column, finishing the same column. Okay, so uh, it's it's up to you, but I think you should develop. Um, as much as you can uh, um, and try to finalize um, in Monday class, okay? Introduce intensity scale, okay? So we'll be covering uh, those um, three properties of values between this week and next week. 
Okay. All right. So let's see. The demo, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I Me, mean, I didn't see you for a while. I know, I'm sorry, I overslept. <laughs> I, I thought you had some uh, emergency.